This episode is sponsored by Zenro Clothing Co. Pick up your tees and our accessories at zenroclothingco.com and be sure to use offer code SOCRATES at checkout for 20% off select items. Also, if you're not into uh, spending the money, just check out the Zenro Radio playlist, zenroclothingco.com, music for your everyday. This episode also is sponsored by The Pornian Bakery. If you're located in the Pornian area of Scarborough, Toronto, be sure to check out The Pornian Bakery, say what's up to Arville, and uh, pick up a donut or two. Bake daily, craft it with love. This episode also is sponsored by Podbean. Podbean is the podcasting platform of choice. It's the one that me and Vish use, and um, it's great, you know? If you're uh, looking to start that DIY podcast yourself, definitely check out Podbean. Use uh, the link podbean.com slash Socraticgamers and gain one month of unlimited podcasting for free. Test it out, build that content. Uh, anyone could podcast, right, Vish? Yep. Start a, start a podcast and uh, get your ideas out there. All right, enjoy the episode. All right, so uh, you were saying something, you were showing me something last night. I thought we'd just start off with that. The, I thought it was pretty funny. So the libertarian thing and the Second Amendment thing. So I'll start with the libertarian thing because that, that was pretty clever. Right, yeah, I thought it was kind of funny because um, so anyone... Maybe, well, but basically a libertarian what is a libertarian? Is, yeah. yeah, so basically a libertarian is somebody who's like, oh, I don't want the government to like control me, blah, blah, blah. Right, that, that's yeah, yeah, essentially yeah, yeah. it. Like I just want right. to be, free, I from be free from the government. Don't, yeah. I don't want anything to rule us. Okay, rule so, over us, right? so like we often talk about like, don't bite the hand that feeds. So the people that always want to live off grid, it's like, but you don't realize you're a part of the grid. Cause it's mm-hmm. like, where did you get your ax? Where did you get your solar panels? Where did you get, like, that's all a part of a, sure. a global system. Right? right. So here's, here's the, the easiest way to dismantle any kind of argument from a libertarian is when they say they want to, uh, have their own land and live free. Yeah, but who gave you those the rights to own the property of that land? Yeah, it's, which is a simple way to you know debunk this whole thing because it's government, <laughs> right? And you rely on the government to uphold the rules for you owning that land, right? Or else people can just come in and just and like take it away, take it over. Yeah, you. yeah, exactly. Like, there's a reason. That's what I think is crazy. It's like if you just look at how it works, like if you just if you're really curious about some, no, no, here, here, how about this? If you really don't like something, figure out how that thing works and see if you really don't like it. Do you not like the idea of it? Or are you just not getting the full picture? So people who don't like global economics, right? Mm-hmm. Or like they want to live off grid, right? Yeah. So it's like, did you even really consider like what that means? So look look at how global economics actually affects the world, just like libertarianism, like think that you don't want to be part of the government. Mm-hmm. Look at how government structures like affect where you live right and do you really not want to live like that right yeah and like especially with the global economics thing i think well it it was a big thing when trump was there which was like to uh, stop any kind of like these trades or whatever right yeah trade deals but uh, the thing is you you want america to be number one right like yeah we we rely on them right you don't like because if you're not going to do it um china's going to take over which they're already doing Mm -hmm. and russia's going to do it so do you want authoritarian governments it, ruling the world? Totally. It, it makes no sense. It's like the, the American is the pillar of Western society. Mm-hmm. So it's like, why are you, why are you not going to root for that? You know, because you need that. Right. Pillar. And they don't understand what globalization really means. Right. Like they don't right, understand. Totally. Yeah. Uh, like, do you like, like strawberries? Because, <laughs> oh no, strawberries, are, you can get that in Canada. Do you like pineapples? Because you need a greenhouse. Mm-hmm. But where did you get the seeds for that pineapple? Right. You know what I mean? Like things yeah, like that. Yeah, it's like, yeah. it, I don't, I, I think it's pretty narrow sighted to think of anything in, in such black or white terms. There's always like a gray, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. Yeah. And then the second, or do you have anything more about the libertarian thing? No, I think that was just the easiest way to dismantle. Yeah, it's, their it, argument, it's a clever <laughs> argument. I didn't even think about that. It's like, yeah, of course. Like you do rely, do you like roads? Like the government will, like they, they're in charge of the things that you don't want to have to think about, but mm-hmm. you take for granted. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, second amendment, we don't have that. Or, or like they've never probably um, been to other countries that don't have like these, uh, services yeah. like, like clean have, have good you know, roads or like these sort of things. Totally. It's have very traveled? different. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. the thing. Once you've traveled, you understand like, wait. like, wow, we have it pretty good here. Yeah. yeah totally. <laughs> Even in the vaccine situation, actually I have a really funny, 
uh, before we get into the Second Amendment thing, so we were in um, Muskogee yesterday, and like going through these like small towns tripped me out so hard because mm-hmm. I was like, oh, well, one, there's so much benefit to living in a city because there's um, different cultures. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you have different perspectives. Okay. So when we were going through these towns of like literally towns of like maybe 500 people to get to different yeah, yeah, places, yeah. right? Yeah. I didn't even know these things really existed. I was like, wait, wh- where's your, your like global bookstore? How's Amazon going to get, well, Amazon probably get there, but you know, you're so, you're so, um, you're so like separated from other things that can build your perspective it makes sense to me now why people have a narrow sighted viewpoint and why most people voted for Trump in America. Mm-hmm. Cause it's like, you have that small town mentality just like these places. So, okay. I, the reason I bring this up, we were walking. Well, most people did town. not vote for Trump. Just no, no, but, it, right, no, but why was it like 50, 50? Why was it pretty, not 50, 50, but why was it even close? Right. He didn't win by a landslide like middle America. Remember, remember when we looked at the map and it's like yeah, red, yeah, yeah, yeah. middle, and then uh, blue is all on the outside because that's yeah. where all the cities are. Yeah. Right. So like, why, why is the center not seeing what the blue is seeing? Mm-hmm. Right. That's because you're, you're in like a melting pot. You're all thinking the exact same way. Mm-hmm. And, and so when we were in these small towns, it's like majority Caucasian. Yeah. And as we were going through, I saw this giant flag. I want to take a photo there. It's like, don't take a photo of that. <laughs> uh, it said, Trump 2020, make America, oh, keep America great. Giant, <laughs> giant flag in front of his window. <laughs> right. And I was like, wow, I suddenly don't feel safe here. Like, it's like, <laughs> really, like, why, like, do your neighbors not, are your neighbors not like, what's wrong with you? Right. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of weird. And it's like, oh, this small town thinking is, is, is the anti-globalist movement, but it's mm-hmm. like, you don't, it's like the, it's the libertarian movement, but it's like, well, no, not really libertarian, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the narrow minded view, lacking perspective mm-hmm. of travel. Mm-hmm. Like you were saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. yeah. But it's like, isn't it weird? It's like, cause we live in the city. So you don't really go out to these like rural areas. And when you see them, you're like, Oh, that's weird. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's why cities are have a certain viewpoint than no, yeah. rural areas. It's weird. It's w- weird to me that... Because you intermingle with other cultures and you realize we're all just the same. Yeah, so, so imagine imagine living in that small town and you're connected to the internet. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, wow, I, I vibe with this movement, blah, 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 blah. But then like everyone around you is like thinking in a specific way. Mm-hmm. You know? Like I... I can see how some people like the youth are like, I can't wait to get out of this town and go to like university in the big city. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like, cause, cause I went to like, for, for one thing, it was really annoying that there's no bathroom, like with COVID there's no bathroom in these small towns. So I had to like find a chain, a chain uh, store, like grocery store, oh, right, yeah. use a bathroom. <laughs> and then when I was there, there was like all these like youthful kids there working. And I was like, Oh, I could totally see how you'd be thinking. I can't wait to leave. Cause they were all like punky and like really trying to like right. yeah, show yeah, yeah. their creativity. Like, right. they, yeah. you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. they weren't, they weren't like everyone else. I, I get why people rebel in those, like in those towns. Cause everyone's like a freaking yeah. cookie cutter clone. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. And there was no Asian people. I was like, well, this is weird. Well, it, yeah. I mean, it, it makes sense. It feel a little weird. But it's also why wouldn't there be Asian people there? Because they're more in the city, right? You're going to be That's intermingling like, with your own people me, in the city. It tripped me out so hard. Yeah. Yeah, anyways. So. <laughs> it, it, there was one time that me and, uh, me and Wob were driving to Goderick, Ontario, mm-hmm. to like film something. And then it was like the four of us were in the car. We were all like non-Caucasian. And then we stopped in this small town for like gas. Yeah. And like it was, it was like one of those like like Texas Chainsaw Massacre things. Like the, the dude came out and he's like, where are y'all headed? And I was like, <laughs> well, people really talk like this here? Like it was weird. You know? <laughs> not, not really like Texas-y, but they had like a, a small town accent. And I was like, whoa, what? Yeah, a rural I, accent. A rural yeah. accent. You're like, you're like, this is real? Like I thought this was like America or like in movies or something. No, it happens in Canada. Out. Yeah, there is. They have specific... Like sense, I guess it does change or, or like really small towns of like only that type of person. Mm-hmm. Weird. I don't know. That's trippy, trippy to me. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> so, uh, 
but then that's like our privilege showing, you know, being like, oh, we live in the city. And then like, exactly. Those people in those rural towns, like, oh, damn city dwellers. You know, mm-hmm. like, okay, but yeah. I don't know. I just, those kinds of things freak me out. Cause well, yeah, not, a lot of, I mean, a lot of them don't want the city people in. Yeah, cause, exactly, yeah that's why it's weird to me. It's yeah, like They just want to keep it within the small community. Yeah, and it freaks you out. It freaks me out because it's like, you guys don't even have an Apple store here. Like, <laughs> what, what are you doing? No, but you can't blame the small. It's a small town. No, 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 right? no, totally, totally. But like, <laughs> why would why would anybody go and build a thing there? No, no, but but, but, but like the the idea is that like, why why cut yourself off from evolution, like or gaining greater perspective? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I think I think it's um, uh, I think people have. There may have been a lot of people that have gained more perspective from people in small towns because of the internet. Again, okay, there are, yeah, you know what I mean. Like it, of course, there's still going to be other people that are still going to be the same, the same, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think that there would be. I think there were more people because a lot of people do have dreams of coming to the city. Yeah, to, totally. and, but I can see it now. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I didn't get it before. Yeah. Although, but also, a lot of people like, when they do come to the city, they're they don't know what to do. Like it, it's shock too. Truly it's like shocking because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. you're so used to you know your own way and in a small town buildings. that it's yeah, yeah, totally. and, and and actually it's more community in those small areas, right? Yeah, because everybody yeah. knows each other. Yeah, totally. But and it's like when you come to the city, like you're basically ignored. Like you're yeah, just nobody. True, true, true. So it's there's positives and negatives to this, right? So especially from a person that's coming from a small town who's never experienced a big city, then it's like there'll be a shock too because it's like right. nobody wants to talk to you no one's saying hi but necessarily so, so for me that that's why i like the suburbs like it's a good balance between like rural and like city yeah because like like yeah because that's a huge culture shock between a if you're just coming from like you know 500 people to yeah. a million people yeah, like, <laughs> or more what is this right and then in like suburbs or have the uh, uh, the like there are aspects of like ruralness right there. yeah because you kind of get to know your neighbors yeah totally yeah, yeah. i yeah, I, I don't like the rural aspect, and I also don't like the big city mm-hmm. aspect. Only like, the big city, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like when we're like in downtown Toronto, I'm just like, oh, this is, this is kind of yeah, weird. Yeah, exactly, like, exactly. With COVID, it was different because I was like, oh, there's like nobody around. Like, I can, like, <laughs> yeah, but no. then like, when we went out to that patio, I was like, wow, I don't really like people. <laughs> yeah, I saw like a like a meme on that I too. I saw that too, yeah. You yeah, saw yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's funny. It's like, like, oh, wait, let's go back to the, yeah, the yeah, lockdowns because yeah, totally. <laughs> there's too many people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah there's, there's like too many... Yeah, there, there's, I don't know, it's like, you really need that balance, because there's, too rural is, like, closed-minded, mm-hmm. too jam-packed is, like, ignored, or, like, rude. People, yeah, people yeah, are rude to I, I, see, I, I think rude is there. Like, why yeah. rude? Yeah. But, like, you wouldn't be rude in freaking the suburbs, you know? Because no. there's, like, a healthy balance, you know? Yeah. 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 Anyways, uh, so, yeah, uh, Second Amendment. Second Amendment. It. So, yeah, like, we've probably talked about this before. So, but is it why the Second Amendment is BS? Is that what you're going to say? No, the Second Amendment is not necessarily BS. I'm talking about when they say they, they don't want gun control. That's BS. Who, who doesn't want gun uh, control? When conservatives or Republicans so say. So people with guns say they don't want gun control. Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Because yeah. that is BS right there because their main thing when they say that they want the Second Amendment is that they can overthrow a government, right? Right, right, right. right to bear the gov- arms. Right. And then Second Amendment is the right to bear arms and, uh, and like, whatever, tyranny stuff, mm-hmm. right? So if the government comes and attacks you, you can protect yourself, right? Yeah. But, and then the gun control thing is nobody can just buy any kind of, I mean, like, any, they can yeah. buy guns, but they can't buy cannons, you can't rockets. buy tanks, you can't buy rockets yeah, and all totally. these sort of things. So it's like, well, you... So there is a form of gun control, right? Right. There, there's a limit to your perceived freedom of arms. Yeah. Freedom to bear arms. Yeah. Right to bear arms. Right. So it's like, sure, you can all have your rifles, but if the government comes with the tank, then it's yeah, it it's like rifles do nothing. nothing. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> it, it's yeah, it's funny. Like when you you start breaking down these, it's called iconoclasm. So like, uh, well, like, like let me just finish um, the yeah, point. Yeah. Was like, the point was like people want to ban like assault rifles oh, right okay. like those are the things that are causing these um uh gun control uh anger issues. Yeah, yeah yeah and like all those um crazy things that happened in america right like uh-huh. the shootouts and everything right so yeah, like yeah. It, a lot of them were i guess using assault rifle i don't know like you know something like that so yeah. if we want to ban those it's not like uh um 
uh, you can't not like because you're like you can't own tanks. So there's so th- it, there is a right, legitimate right, reason right. to ban them, right? It's not like you cannot. Right, 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 right. There, there's yeah, 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 as you were saying, like you you think th- you you don't perceive the real limit, but there is a real limit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, so it's like it's like no, I'm free, but you're like not really free. But we've always been doing that stuff. It's like you're free. Okay, but you have to pay taxes though. You know, so it's no, like I know, I know. Really free, but nobody you know? brings up that point. Like you can't own a tank. If 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 you're gonna face with a rifle and a yeah. government that comes with a tank, your rifle is nothing. Yeah. No. I, so like that uh, means so, that yeah. there's that a limit. Means that you're you know if you were to say that it's there's no supposed to be no gun control, then you can own a tank. But, but you can't. <laughs> right, 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 right. Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying. <laughs> it's, it's weird. Like, it goes back to the first point of people need to really look into what it is that they're arguing for and see if it really makes sense, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. But we don't want to... All right, so back to iconoclasm. So iconoclasm is like you break... Uh, you say uh, you take an icon like any any ideology and you break it right just like that it's like oh i have the right to bear arms you mm-hmm. broke it mm-hmm. uh, libertarian view you broke it right and i think that people don't want to do that because they're most comfortable in living a narrative that's pushed onto them of course you know it's like it's like, oh, we're libertarian, screw the government. It's like, yeah, and then that becomes like popular, but then it's like, yeah, but you rely on the government. Oh, but I've invested so heavily in my identity as a libertarian. Right. You know? Yeah. If you're an iconoclast, if you just flow with everything, then you're always learning, always growing, rather mm-hmm. than being stagnant. Right. You know? And I think there, there's a point where people just get so... I really believe it's 30. I said this, like, before, when, when I was turning 30, and then now that I'm 32, I'm like... It's very true. Whoever you are, whoever you've built your mind up to be at that point is generally what it's going to be. Because you've had like so many years of indoctrination. Sure, mm-hmm. you can change it, but that's a lot of work. Like, it has to be like work? a shock change. Yeah, yeah. It's like, like a near death experience or something like that. Yeah. Like people, yeah. right? People have near death experiences. Like, oh my God, I love life again. It's like, yeah, it took you that. It takes like a really big, drastic thing mm-hmm. in order to see the truth about yeah, reality. Yeah. But I truly believe that whoever you've, been like building in your viewpoint up to that point that's just that's it that's who you're gonna be right right so so it's like um the matrix after a certain age you can't wake people up you mm-hmm. know it's like if you are if you're if you're not refuse if, if you're refusing to keep learning and breaking your own perspective then you'll always be that closed-minded person Cause yeah because like, could you ever see yourself becoming like fully staunch in a belief now no, because no. you're because you're you're naturally programmed and trained to like be like, do I actually really believe this? I might believe it right now, but if there's more evidence, I'll change it. Of course, yeah. right? But that's that's thirty plus years of mm-hmm. building that practice, yep. you know, which is scary to think about because <laughs> it's like now I just look at other people and I'm like it is that's who you are, bro. That's why it's like yeah, it's really based on their experience and how they grew up and all that kind of stuff totally, whatever yeah. they yes, learned yes, through yes, life because everybody has different things that they had to deal with right yeah so like we were privileged enough to have a freedom of thought i guess yeah and, totally. uh, but, but it's also like it goes back to your entire personality thing like if you mm-hmm. are a certain way mm-hmm. it's it was it's uh, if you're if you're a certain way at 30 that's likely because of things that happened of course because because everything is because everything is a buildup until you hit like 25 and you've graduated university or mm-hmm. whatever. And like, now you're trying to find your way in the world, you know, that's why I say like 30. Cause you've had now, now you're in the world. Do you stick to being that same person or do you shift because right. of yeah, yeah, yeah. worldly things? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> um, but that, that's also why I just say like when people <laughs> sometimes they get asked, like, what do I do about this? I'm going to just tell them you love them. Because that's it. Like, you can't... Like, the, the amount of work you need to do to change someone is so unfathomably daunting. Mm-hmm. Especially if they're really old. It's like... Uh, it's yeah, like, there's a certain point where, just, yeah. It is what it is. Like, yeah. Yeah. Speaking, speak, all right, so speaking of people, uh, do you have any more on those two points? No. All right, so GMO babies. So... Uh, I read the book Hacking Darwin (laughs) and it's so funny to me how people 
Okay, okay. So if you knew, let, let me ask you because I didn't ask you this yet. If you knew that your kid, like if you were to have a kid, if you if you knew they had a gene that would kill them, mm-hmm. a terminal gene, yeah. would you remove the gene? Yeah. Of course, yeah. right? Why, why would you not? Um, if you were... If if you were sick now with like a really bad disease, uh, would you go back like to a thousand years ago and use those kinds of medicines? So like uh, chanting, smoke, using wild berries. Would you would you rely on that, or would you look at like okay, what are some therapies today that I could use? Well, today's today's right. Okay, so why do people get so upset about gene therapy and like CRISPR? Because <laughs> it's like no, that's just the next evolution. In where we're going well i don't know if people know the term crispr uh it uh so crispr is just like gen- it's it's a it's it's the name it's the brand of a genetic engineering thing the, it's like the crispr okay. crispr is like a thing like it's like a ibm okay i see it, it's not it's not a tool it's, it's a tool but it's not it's not uh the the, br- the mother of it all is called genetic engineering okay and then crispr is like a derivative of that like We'll use this method, which is CRISPR method. I got you. It's it's not like okay, okay, you know I understand. Yeah. yeah. So um, so yeah. So it's it's weird to me that people are so against this, but we're cool with other things like GMO foods. Mm-hmm. Like, w- why would you? Like, w- it's just hypocritical. But it's the next best. Like freezing your eggs, like embryo in vitro fertilization that all falls under genetic well maybe it depends on um, who you're speaking to because people who've uh have some certain illness people (laughs) (laughs) i think this comes down to experience again it's like people who've had um illnesses in that family and if you would to ask them if there's a way to remove it through gene therapy or whatever would they do it they probably would say yes yeah totally yeah totally i think a lot of people that are saying no is um either could be very like a religious kind of backing interesting okay uh and or just never understood what that means like uh, okay i love, what it, diseases I love that you said that because that is actually his thing so the the jamie metzel guy mm-hmm. he's pro well he's not really pro or con it he's just like giving you the information okay but what he's saying is that people who people who refuse this kind of gene uh gene like manipulation mm-hmm. in the future mm-hmm. they'll be no different than anti-vaxxers of today because it's like why would you not do this your kids are not gonna have a leg up right like you know uh and he said that the only the only institution that's having a real problem with this is the catholic church because mm-hmm. they believe that you know you're tampering with god right right but, i wouldn't just say it's the catholic church but maybe that's, that's the like bigger the primary that's the biggest one that yeah or, right i guess the people i would the think book. any religious institution would be well, no, 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 but but religious like, uh, like yeah. the Abrahamic religions. Sure, that those are the real. Ones I would that say are that's more them. would make more sense. Yeah, yeah, right. Because like, um, because Hindus, that's a religion, right? I yeah. don't think. But everyone has different beliefs, that. even within that. In Hinduism, oh, it's okay. it's very. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's not like a but, but standard, right? Right, but but in the Catholic religion, it's very like what we all look to the Pope to mm. give us the answer to God. Mm. So do, do you know how yeah, this works? Yeah. What's that? Do, okay. So, so the Pope, the reason why he's the best one, actually I heard Eddie Bravo explain it. And I'm like, this is actually the best way to explain it. So the Pope talks to God every day. The okay. bishops talk yeah, yeah, to yeah. God every week. And then the priests talk to God every month. So it's like, it's like we <laughs> okay. rely on, we rely on the Pope because he's got the most direct contact with God. Mm-hmm. That that's that's where you're pulling all this information from. You know, it's like it's like what he decrees is yeah. mostly yeah. what's going to go. Why? Because he's talking to God on the daily. Right, right. I mean, yeah, there was a lot of things that he had done or the new Pope had done that was different. Right, I think. And I don't remember offhand, but there was a lot of things that he had said that were like, oh, this has never been said from the Catholic Church. Oh really? Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, so this the new pope, but there are certain things that are still, which is the the whole gay marriage thing, right? Wasn't there like he, a, he's not into that? Yeah, but there was, so I don't remember what what he said, which was different than whatever was said before. Oh okay. I can't cool. remember this. Is, yeah. So basically, switching things up and like picking and choosing. 
Yeah. All right. So that's a very human tendency. <laughs> and how do you know if he's speaking to God on the daily? So God changes his mind quite often. <laughs> it, it's not, it's not like you're looking at him like some, like, all right. If, if you looked at it like this, like he's got the most experience. So we're going to listen to what he's saying. Mm. If you looked at it like that, then you have, you're open to fallacy because then he's a human being. All right. You have the most experience. We'll listen to you. That makes sense to me. But if you're telling me that God's telling you what to do on the daily, that's open to interpretation. That's open to lies. He might just be like, like you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. it's not like a government official. Cause when, when the Pope says something, it's like, well, the Pope's saying it. It's not like Justin Trudeau saying, it and then everyone attacks Justin Trudeau. Mm -hmm. It's like the Pope said it. <laughs> it's, it's ordained by God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the next Pope can change it. Because he's talking to God again on the daily. And he's <laughs> yeah. like, no, God, God told me that that was wrong, bro. Yeah, he didn't understand him. Yeah. So, again, makes no sense to me. I, I don't know. From a very young age, like if you told any children, any child like this, like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. they would be like, I don't believe you. <laughs> it makes no sense. But then you get indoctrinated into thinking this must be the way. Yeah. Goes back yeah. to iconoclasm, right? We right. just want like a narrative that'll like keep us feeling safe yeah mm -hmm. yeah it is what it is but it's it's weird like thinking about the whole CRISPR and the genetic manipulation thing why would anybody not and then people are like so I asked Tara this and she's like well where do you draw the line and I'm like there, there is no line yeah. like because because you're like okay this but not this who, who decided that like mm -hmm. okay you can you can genetically modify them to not having diseases but you can't affect their eye color. Why not? What's the difference? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's all arbitrary. Yeah, right. But could you imagine super babies? That'd be so sad. So the thing is, like, yeah, the, the, again, it comes down to this world and how other because country other countries are doing this. China is yeah, going to be doing yeah, actually, this. Actually, China. If, the if, one. if China ends up creating like super soldiers, no, they 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 are. So in the book, uh, this book came out twenty twenty, and he said that I think it was twenty twenty. And he said 2018 is when they birthed the first CRISPR baby. Mm -hmm. China, the okay, China okay. Did. right. So yeah, they, they are working on it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And then you're no, going to only they, let... You know what I mean? Wow, wow. You're, you're like, you're actually answering... Like you didn't even read the book. And you're uh -huh. answering logically. That's exactly... Here's a chapter on that. Uh -huh. It's like the genetic arms race is next. Which is, who's going to have the super soldier first? <laughs> you can't let you know, it comes China back to the it. Yeah, it comes back to the whole globalization. Like, you yeah. gotta... You can't let someone else do it. And then they're going to be way more powerful than yeah. you. Like, this is, we don't want an authoritarian government ruling the world. Yeah, here. totally. So, <laughs> see, it's funny. It's like, what you just said was a logical conclusion and it was in the book. You didn't even read the book. Yeah. So, mm. but it, it's so, it's so, <laughs> it's so funny because I think it was like the World Health Organization or like the UN, the UN was like, we're not going to, uh, we're going to collectively agree that we're going to not create these CRISPR babies because mm -hmm. like, we don't know what's going to happen next. China was like, that's cool. And then they made their own. So now America's like, you got to catch up so yeah. like naturally because. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You have to. Competition. <laughs> and, and what he was saying is like, you know, like natural selection, like Darwin, mm -hmm. natural selection. So uh, that's birthed out of competition. So two cells are always competing to be yep. the number one, right? And then what he says is, there's a different form of competition now, which is um, global arms race of genetics. Mm -hmm. Like, if even if you don't want it to happen, we're going to need to do it because we're afraid of what China's going to do. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird, eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, so, so speaking of which, I had this interesting revelation while we were working on Tara's program. I always thought... Do you have any more on CRISPR? No. All right, cool. Uh, so... So this ties into uh, what comes first, the body or the mind. Mm -hmm. So, okay, this is a very yogic principle. So they're always like the mind then the body and then the world, mm -hmm. right? And I that that's how I was thinking about it. And then listening to Tara talk about it, it's actually body, mind, mind world. Yeah. And then because she's like, okay, you need to feel the body first. And I was like, really? Think? I was like, no, but that doesn't make any sense because everything I've taught, I've been taught, blah, blah, blah. But actually, if you think about it, the body can live without the mind. Mm -hmm. So 
because because you you can you can be in like I don't know vegetative state yeah. flow state yeah. there are moments where you're not actually using your mind <laughs> your body's just acting right if you played sports you know what this feels like right yeah. you've been in the flow so if that's true then the mind is just the derivative of the body yeah if you look at it reduction but if it, it but it makes sense in the sense like the chicken and egg thing because okay. the body has to come first then the mind yes right like yes even with evolution <laughs> yes all right okay so so you're saying well okay the chicken and egg analogy though is like what came first the chicken or the egg so what's your answer chicken yeah okay or it's i'm thinking about that one i yeah. think so I there was think an so. answer to the chicken thought, and the egg i never thing. thought about it before oh oh i've thought of it but like I haven't thought of it with this new level of understanding. So like, okay, let's, let's break it down. Chicken versus egg. The egg will have the genetics. No, of course the chicken, because when do you call the chicken, the chicken? <laughs> so like it, it, it looks like a chicken talks like a chicken, but it's not a chicken yet because it hasn't had, we haven't claimed it as because mm -hmm. chicken is just a name. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. So what comes first, the chicken or egg? Well, this is so philosophical, but <laughs> But if you actually break that down reductionist wise, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? It's always the chicken because once you name it a chicken, it's the chicken. Yeah. Is that what you meant? Because I'm like thinking of it in like philosophical terms. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. No, that's what, I, that's what I was trying to say. Like relating yeah. to that, where it's like the body, um, like evolution wise, mm -hmm. for humans to become humans, mm -hmm. like is, is the bodies being all like, like we go through different like, forms yeah. of bodies like, it's, it's, <laughs> to the point where we right, become right, 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 mindful right. and conscious and all that stuff right, 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 to that right, evolution right. setting right. but in order for that to happen the body came first. right because because would you consider a homo erectus which we came from a human because we're homo sapiens right right yeah the one so, removed is a homo erectus <laughs> so is that is that a human no because we're homo sapiens but the body was there before yeah. the sapien because all right so basically a homo sapien is sapien means thinking mm -hmm. so you're the thinking man right Ho homo yeah yeah yeah, is yeah. The, yeah so we've created the distinction between not thinking and thinking mm -hmm. but the entire time there was always the physicality of the body mm -hmm. yeah i agree yeah totally yeah the body always has to come first because we own the sapien came later Actually, even if you just look at it linguistically, it makes sense. <laughs> homo sapien, homo erectus. Like, at one point, we became thinking man. Yeah. 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 After the fact of getting a body. <laughs> yeah, but we've already that's had the body. The yeah, point. that's true, actually. Yeah. <laughs> actually, have you ever heard of... What, there's this new thing called... It's in the book, Sapiens. I highly recommend people reading that book. It's called uh, Homo sapien sapien. Mm -hmm. So now we're the thinking man that thinks. Like, we're, we're the contemplative... Um, right you know okay, new, actually uh evolution it's the egg sorry oh why'd you write egg why um because the egg like whatever hatch hatches from the egg is the chicken okay true true but you still need the genetics of the egg yeah no so it's what i'm saying is it when it evolves it's evolving in the egg in the egg format yeah. okay well but irregardless the, right. the answer is the egg right that's what I was thinking. I think it was the egg because the egg does come first. That egg, whatever hatches, grows up to become the chicken. Right. Okay. Okay. So I was answering it philosophically in the terms of like, when do you? But you were right though because you said when we name it. Yeah, when we name it, which is correct. Yeah, which is in that means that it came from the egg, right? Yes, but I, I was looking at it through different through a different lens. Right. Anyways, I but, like, but I wasn't really trying to make it philosophical in yeah, that yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. It was just more like. Like we have all these evolution bodies, like we came from whatever, like animals through time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Homo erectus and all that stuff to Homo sapiens, but the body was there first before the mind. Okay, I, I understand why I got confused with your chicken and egg thing because both the chicken and egg are ph physical things without yeah, the yeah, mind. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, wait, how does that? It's kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Relating it to that question, but not, maybe it's not a good an analogy. But all right, but 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 using the Homo erectus, Homo sapien. If you just take sapien means thinking, mm -hmm. so it's like yeah, the mind came later, right? But you, yeah, exactly. So the body. But we came, all had Homo in front of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the body, the body always comes before the mind, right? Yeah, which is a total paradigm shift in like um, 
because what you feed it and how you yeah you totally because you feel there's mood changes that you go through the based reason, on what you're eating yeah, ex- totally 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 yeah, yeah, yeah exactly and well, what's fascinating is like one it brings back in determinism mm. because whatever you feed your body is going to influence your mind so people talking about free will it's like no you're just choosing that because you're you're influenced by a thing mm-hmm. and then also like mm-hmm. a lot of things that relate to when you get hangry or like yeah exactly you're being controlled by food here yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. um what do you sam harris call it? like neurophysiological response it's like we think that we're choosing these things but it's like why are you angry i don't know i don't know they eat something and you're like oh i feel so much better yeah is it right like <laughs> that's a great example actually being hangry so it's like so the body actually influences the mind mm. and if the body influences the mind all decisions come back to physiological, physical thing. Mm -hmm. So there really is no choice because like, why, how can you, how can you be free to think something if you're influenced by other things? Mm -hmm. So there's really no free will. Like, um, okay. Sam Harris has got a good question. uh, uh, Has got a good statement for this. If you really had free will, how could you choose the things you're not even aware of? So you're only able to choose from the things you're aware of. Exactly. So you have no real freedom to do like all the things, mm, mm-hmm. you know, you, you're, 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 you're li- your freedom is limited. Mm-hmm. And then if you, if you look back at what, what like prompted that choice, it's a, so it's tied to a physical thing. Mm-hmm. Or like a memory, but a right, memory right. is your your brain, yeah. a synapse in your brain mm-hmm. that's firing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I listened to Russell Brand talk to, um, uh, on Armchair Experts. We were like driving yesterday in Muskoka and he was going off just like how we were just going off. And I was like, yeah, I totally understand. And Tara's like, can we just switch the podcast? And I was like, oh, why? <laughs> and she's like, this is too much. This is too much for my brain right now. There's a, there's a and, level but, to that no, no, too. No, but, but it's right. There is a level to it. But, but what I was going to say is. I found it fascinating. I was like, oh, I listen to this kind of thinking yeah, yeah, all yeah, the yeah, time. Yeah. That's yeah. why my brains, like both of our brains are it. running at this speed. Mm, mm-hmm. But then even the podcast host, like, so Russell Brand went on this crazy tangent about something. And then the host was like, it was almost like I was watching a light glow. And he had, he just said nothing about what Russell Brand was saying because he, he didn't know what he was saying. Mm. And it's like, yeah, because you have to do like the legwork in order to understand what Russell Brand's saying, you know? So if you, so that all being said, if you're listening to this and you're like, what the hell are they talking about? It's like, <laughs> it makes sense if you just do the reading and the legwork behind it. I hope, I hope that made sense about the, uh, free will thing. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's and, very and hard to grasp. Thing. It seems like for a lot of people. Cause most people don't even know they have a mind, right? Most people are just like, oh, I'm just doing this thing. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm just living life. Nobody, nobody like dissected that yeah. you have a mind that you can shut off. Most right. people are ruled by their mind. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. hard for me to understand how that is, but I guess it's true. Yeah, it, it, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, but okay. This is just based on, from my experience. Yeah, right? totally. That's totally. Why. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, so take examples. Like my sister doesn't know, didn't know what ladder meant. Remember you texted like ladder and then she texted me <laughs> into the group. You're like, Oh, the ladder. And then she, that's why I had to answer. I know. It. I know. <laughs> okay, okay. But I did it for that exact reason. Cause I like using that term. But, but I've always wanted to use it. Just never no, but, but came it's, up. Through. It's a normal term. I, was like, I know yeah, it's a normal term. Like, exactly. But exactly. Then she texted me. She's like, what does he mean by ladder? Like, <laughs> does that mean later? Did he just mess it up? And I'm like, <laughs> no, no. Ladder means the, the second, of the, the second two. option of yeah. the two. If I said, former which is the first, first one option, yeah <laughs> and then another one was trippy is like omnivore so terrace is just like oh, i don't really know what an omnivore is oh and i'm like oh people like we, you there's have to there's i guess level of yeah. gaps in our that's what i'm saying so like so like if you're if you're like what are you guys talking about there's things that like physicists that we watch and then we're like i have no idea what you're talking about right now yeah, 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 you yeah. know like but Again, it goes back to like wanting to learn, having to learn, like, you know what I mean? Like, right, right. Like, why do you believe what you believe? If you believe it, look into like the libertarian thing. People mm-hmm. don't really, really look into what libertarian means. Mm-hmm. They're just like, oh, it's a nice platitude. I'm going to follow that. Exactly. Down with the government. Right. They're like, okay. But, right, right. It just sounds good. Right. Yeah. But don't know what that really means. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like, you have to remember that there are different levels of 
people's understanding not not sound like elitist because like no 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 yeah it's you, true like there's so many things that i hear i'm like i don't i have no idea what you just said mm-hmm. you know like medical stuff and chairs going off i'm like I, I don't know what that means just give me like what what is the direction i need to go you right because like, because yeah in order to fully understand it we have to go through exactly what you went thank through you. it's totally, hard to totally, totally. yeah so it's not elitist it's just like did you do the background there's just work? gaps in knowledge yeah, that's totally. all yeah so sometimes you just gotta be like i gotta trust you tell me what i need to do next mm-hmm. like yeah, give me like basically the action steps because mm-hmm. i don't know what the whole thing you said was right yeah okay so so speaking of things that you don't really understand um i was listening to selma hayek on we had a lot of time in that car we drove <laughs> for like literally drove for like six hours i miss those though like oh, wow. when we used to travel we'd like drive and spend the whole days like listening to podcasts or like chatting usually just listen to podcasts and um so we were listening to Selma Hayek on that one and she brought up quantum physics and I was like, Ugh, I can't listen to this right now. <laughs> so like they, they were talking about, they were talking about, uh, she's very knowledgeable. Like what she was saying was very true. She's mm-hmm. like, you have, you have subconscious programming that you don't even know you have. Okay. So yeah. like when you say, so people who believe in like, um, the secret, right? It's like manifestation. You just have to believe it. Mm-hmm. She's like, yeah, you might vocalize it, but subconsciously there's synapses firing in your brain that are like, yeah, I don't believe it. So you might be saying, oh, I'm, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this. But the reason why your actions aren't working towards it is because subconsciously you don't believe it's true. Right. You're trying to consciously tell you something that your subconscious is like mirror lying. Mm-hmm. So you have to like trick the brain. So I was like, whoa, this girl, like, this like actress knows a lot about how the mind works. And then she got into uh, string theory and I was like, I was like, okay, what, what is your belief? It basically people using quantum physics, they're using it like in a religious term now, Yeah, you know, like they don't really know what it is. And she's like, she's like, yeah, I believe in parallel universes and like unlimited choices and like different timelines. But I'm like, how is that any different than believing a man in the sky? (laughs) Right? Like, think about it, you know, freaking freaking you don't it, it goes back to the full education right it's like you don't really look into what it is you're you're believing in you know it's like all right i believe in a man in the sky abraham and religion okay try and prove it to yourself you know but then in that those religions it's like um doubting thomas so like there's a person in christianity his name is thomas and they call them doubting thomas because Jesus came back and then he's like, prove to me that you're real. Mm -hmm. Like, let me, let me touch your scars where they hammered into you. And he's like, do you not believe if you are not a believer, then you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Right. Right. And it's like, okay, so you're just like, you're holding knowledge above me and believing in cults. Anyway. So to get back to the quantum physics thing, if you watch, if you watch, um, Neil deGrasse Tyson or Brian Greene, they'll admit that quantum physics is the like the precipice of science we don't know what it is yeah so people are just deriving stories from Mm -hmm. it if you don't know what it is like what is what is religion but naive science right yeah so like you didn't know what a volcano was you're like oh no the volcano god's mad at me yeah create a religion oh i need to pray for you don't understand how like weather forecast work mm-hmm. so you need to like do a rain dance and then it'll rain right. right so what what i'm noticing now is people who believe in quantum physics and alternate realities they're like okay so first they're like um the newtonian physics don't work on that level right right and i'm like yeah because gravity if you listen to these scientists gravity changes at different levels mm-hmm. there's a reason why the boiling point on earth is 100 but if you go to venus the boiling point is different because it's a different atmosphere right but i think we, it changes also even here oh really at uh, elevation levels oh so there you go so like so people don't look into that and um so so like in space there's different gravity so mm-hmm. it's different mathematics on different planets there's different gravity so like yeah gravity here is negative 9.8 right but on planets it's not negative 9.8 it's different right because they have a different gravitational pull so at a quantum level 
the reason why people are like, oh, Newtonian physics doesn't work at a quantum level, showing that there's an alternate reality that we can tap into. It's like, no, we just don't have the instruments to test what gravity is at that level. Mm -hmm. And you don't have any quantum tools to, to like see at that level. Because anything in quantum physics is just mathematics. Like it's theoretical math. Right, right, right. right? So that, that's one thing. So it's like we don't have the tools or the math to understand really what that is at a quantum level. And the second thing they always point to is that uh, string theory where one particle on one side of the earth and then another particle on the other side of the earth, if you move one, instantaneously the other one will move mm -hmm. right and what they're saying is like are we tied to alternate realities that way right because it's like right but we don't know but we don't know so like so the assumption is that nothing can move faster than the speed of light mm -hmm. right so in order for that one particle to get the message to the other particle it has to go faster than the speed of light if it's if it's telling right, it right right, right. so and they're like, well, nothing moves faster. All right, how do you know nothing moves faster than the speed of light? That's just what we know now. You know what I'm saying? So like at this quantum level, maybe things do move faster than the speed of light, mm -hmm. you know? Or the more logical conclusion is you're doing the math wrong because you, they're not observing particles because you can't see at that level. You have to only do math at that level. Mm -hmm. Like Brian Green said it. He's like, he's like, because uh, he was on Joe Rogan and they were asking about um, the string theory and he's like yeah we, we've just proven it through math and i'm like okay but you can get the math wrong you know M remember the neil degrasse tyson thing where he's like um planet x yeah i think i brought that up in the last podcast mm -hmm. like they they kept saying like oh there's there must be a planet there and there must be a planet there and they couldn't find it mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they realized they were doing the math wrong and when they fixed the math then they're yeah. like oh no everything's actually working perfectly so it's like it's like just wait till the experts have figured it out. Don't derive like religion. <laughs> but we're gonna that. always do that, though, right? I, totally. We're gonna create stories around even little information that we know of something, we right? Because it attaches to a narrative that we like. Because we like narratives. Yeah. D yeah. Totally. Yeah. That's, that's why I came up with like all life is a story you tell yourself. <laughs> it's like saying, yeah, it was like when she said, yeah, you, oh, there's par I believe in parallel universes. It's like why? But you just but you just use the word believe right there. You, oh, you don't know. True. That's that's fascinating. Yeah, you didn't say parallel universes are true. Yeah. You said I believe in this because <laughs> you don't know. But that's not what true. necessarily they're saying. Yeah, I, true, right. True. The study's not saying that. Huh? Yeah, um, it is fascinating. Neil deGrasse Tyson. You have a thing you want? No, to no, no, no. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson said that there are three truths. Uh, there's the there's the truth that is true to you, aka belief, but he's like, I won't call it belief because people, like you see like um, the truth is found in Jesus. So it's like, I don't want right. to call it belief. I, yeah, 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 it's, yeah. It's I think I saw truth, that clip. Right? Yeah. And then the second one is mm. a political truth. If right. it gets repeated enough times, people are just going to believe it. Mm -hmm. And the third one is objective truth. And that's the one that's can, that can be replicated multiple times mm -hmm. through like study. Yeah. And that's what science is, right. you know? People get stuck in the first two. <laughs> Very few people oh, yeah, look yeah. at objective oh, yeah, truths. Yeah. yeah, it's like I don't know. That's why. Um, I, that's why that line is. You know, like all scientists say, if you say you know what um, quantum physics is, you don't know what quantum physics is. <laughs> and you're like, oh, how can that be? How can that be? It's like because no scientist understands it. They they can theorize on it, but they haven't proven it because there's no way to prove it yet. Right. Yeah, we may not even have the technology yet. We don't have the technology. So, yeah, I just thought that was really fascinating. <laughs> yeah. Anything, uh, anything else about quantum physics? Uh, no, uh, but I, I did look up the boiling point. Just wanted to make sure I was correct. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Which is, yeah. So when they give you the 100 degrees Celsius boiling point for water, that's at sea level. Oh, interesting. If you're at Mount Everest, the water's boiling point is at 68 degrees. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, see, there you go. You've disproven it. I mean, like you've, you've shown that there, you've shown that there are different maths. Like people are like, Oh, Newtonian physics doesn't work. It's like, yeah, at that level, like Newtonian physics is the level we all see right. on earth. Yeah. You know, at this plane mm -hmm. of whatever, like mm -hmm. if we go towards the center of the earth, maybe the physics will be different, you know? Right. 
it's funny to me when they go like if you keep zooming into an atom you'll notice that there's nothing there it's like yeah because your instrument can't see past that <laughs> thing mm-hmm. you know because like uh yo- yogis and stuff they'll be like at the center of everything there's nothing and it's like yeah that's true because that's all we know so far you yeah know? And like, yeah but if you keep zooming in there'll be nothing it's like yeah because your instrument that you're zooming in with <laughs> cannot see that far yeah you can't say that you just only can talk about what we know yeah we can't go further than that yeah and then it just becomes belief total totally and then if you're if you're looking at it from that perspective then trust the scientists who studied it because <laughs> do you know the math no do you know how to interpret the math no so trust them right you know i guess that's why like so they say science is like a religion now because yeah you have to like trust in the word of others but sure it's, it's yeah, the most objective yeah, though yeah yeah, yeah. Because there's not like, it's not like what we were saying about the Pope who's like talking to God every day mm-hmm, and then like mm-hmm. switches it up as soon as a new Pope comes along. This one is like, no, it's just scientists after scientists rigorously attacking one another. Because that's what they do, eh? They just like, somebody comes up with a theory and then people like try their best to dispute it. Yeah. You know? And like, what other thing is doing that? No. <laughs> Jiu-jitsu. That's sure, it. but. No, I know, I'm just kidding. But like, you know what I mean? Like. I guess fighting in some sense. I mean, that's what Jujutsu did for everything else. Yeah, like, is it true? Like, prove it to me. Mm-hmm. That's it. But then you don't want to be a doubting Thomas, right? Because then you want to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Right. After you died. Right. But I think, you know, if God's there, he would be a reasonable God. Yeah, he'd be like, you know what? Yeah, you know, a lot of, uh, lot, there's a lot of, um, like, misconceptions. Weird misconceptions that are going around. I can understand why you did not believe in me. Yeah, enter, enter the kingdom of yeah. heaven. Yeah. True, you know? I, I think so. I think it makes sense. If he is true, then he would... Like, it's been 2,000 years since we've had another guy down here. I think we should bring another guy down here. That's true. No, no, no. <laughs> it's they're all in the insane asylums. <laughs> no, no, no. They are here. You just don't want to give well, them the Well, then it's dollar. not our fault, then. <laughs> That's your fault. Yeah, it's true. You sent the wrong one. Yeah. yeah. They're the people with the signs that say... Or like, what about the cult leaders? You know, let's say yeah. that, and then people get them. Yeah. Well, then why did they go and kill people? Wow. All right, all right. But actually, let, let's dissect that because <laughs> you know how they're like, you can enter into the kingdom of heaven. What you don't realize is that the kingdom of heaven is already here. Yes. If you just look at life through the lens of like wonder, then everything is amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just actually, um, I came up with this line back in 2016 when we were traveling. It's like, all life is a celebration. We've just been at the party so long, we've come to forget it. Right. So we've taken it all for granted. So it's like, oh, another day, another sunrise. Like, no, do you understand that this is like you're alive in this moment? Mm-hmm. Or like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. wow, technology is amazing. But well, what wow, would happen in heaven this. then? Like, you know what I mean? No, like, no, no, like, that, like the, the, the perennial wisdom of like the, the real truth behind it is that heaven is right now no i get that okay. no, no no i i understand that i'm talking from from their perspective too right but, and yeah. from their perspective who believe that there's a heaven after this yeah, which where they live forever no no where yeah. they live forever what what is the people don't know what is the difference like yeah no pe- people don't no no I, actually okay so all, would, would living forever uh like wouldn't that be boring like if every day is the same yeah yeah true yeah wouldn't wouldn't you take that for granted too <laughs> You know, like, oh, another cloudy day up here. Yeah, I don't oh, understand. another banquet of food that, you know. Right, I think I think that when it's finite. I'm sad you didn't watch the movie Bliss last night because all these things we're talking about are in that movie. Right. But, oh, I wanted to watch it, but I didn't end up getting to it. But, right. like, it, when where it makes, um, where life means something is when it's finite. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Achilles said that. We're, mm-hmm. we're uh, everything's more beautiful because we're doomed. Yeah, because it's not going to last. But people start to think that they'll live forever, so they start taking things for granted, mm-hmm. right? And like for for real, like you, you you don't value death, right? You know, yeah. I think he, you know he, the back of my st- my phone. Let's see that it says you are going to die anyway. <laughs> sticker on my phone. It's like you got to remember that, right? And we don't see that because we're not living in those times where people you know died all the time or wars and stuff that used to always happen right? yeah so they didn't see it and you were we were hoping that covid would do that you know 
like reframe. It may have done it for some people. Yeah, yeah, true. No, yeah, definitely it did. It was a very like powerful awakening moment. Mm -hmm. Not in like spiritual sense, but like, well, I guess, yeah, in a spiritual sense, but not in like a woo woo sense. No, no, no. Yeah. Cause like even, even me, I'm like, wow, I was taking movies for granted. I didn't Mm -hmm. even think that it would stop. You know, movie theaters are amazing to me now. Right. Right. They always were, but having it taken away from you is like how important they were to our lives. Yeah, That's what, that's what we've learned from it. Yeah. 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 Fascinating stuff. Yeah. That's my, anything Mm -hmm. else? No, I think, yeah. Was there anything else? No, but I kind of, oh, there's more topics. Yeah. But I, I felt like. I was going to say something, but I don't remember. Anyways, so Selma Hayek, to continue with that, um, because I found this pretty interesting. So her first movie, I was telling you this before we started, but her first movie was Desperado. Mm -hmm. And then she was like um, a soap star in Mexico. And then nobody take you, takes you seriously because like you don't make a lot of money in Mexico as a soap star or whatever, whatever. Right. And then her first, her first movie, she had to do a lovemaking scene with, Antonio Banderas mm-hmm. and she was so like she was like cry- like it wasn't in the script she said but they wrote it in because they saw the chemistry between the two actors so like you have to do this so the producers are like we want this scene in there so she had to get like naked and like make love to him and then she was saying because Dak Shepard who was interviewing was like oh that's my favorite scene in the movie because you guys started killing people it was so like awesome and then she's like I was crying through that whole thing and like we could only film it in short bursts because I couldn't keep it together for that long because I was so ashamed. I knew my parents were going to see it. Like mm. they'd become the laughing stock of Mexico. Right. Like, Oh, look, your daughter did this. Blah, blah, blah. And like, it's, it's interesting to me because you never think about what these actors have mm-hmm. to go through. Especially oh, yeah. back in the day, you know, yeah. that Harvey Weinstein stuff. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I can see it now. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. But like now we have information. We have like social media. If any of that happened, you'd just be canceled now. <laughs> or like people would tweet about it right away. Yeah. Because did anybody know Harvey Weinstein before? Like, like I mean, like regular people. Nobody knew he was a no, 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 producer. So. But now we all know his name because all these actors like put him in the you know spotlight. Yeah. yeah. I think you only have to be in the movie to really know. Remember these names of Weinstein and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, totally, totally. But it's like you have to appreciate where we are with technology now Mm -hmm. because that stuff would have just completely gone under the radar for so long. Right. Well, it did go under the radar. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Yeah, Information. Mm -hmm. Anyways, there's a, just a small thing. Uh, what did you think about Loki? So the latest episode of Loki I thought was, not the best of the two. Oh, I still loved it. I was like, oh, that's... um, I don't know. I didn't really like it as much. Just the main thing was where they were leading to was the main message. Oh yeah, yeah. That, that's what everyone's... I thought. That's the Spoiler only. I, I felt like the yeah, variants. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's what I felt like. That was the main thing for me to take but out of this. It was, it was interesting too because like during the movie. Uh, during the show, they're like movies now. Uh, <laughs> as he's playing Luke Owen Wilson's character, Owen Luke Owen. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Owen Wilson. His brother is an actor too. Uh, so Owen Wilson was like calling the soldiers Minutemen, mm-hmm. and I was I was wondering why you kept saying Minutemen. So I googled Minutemen, and it's like people who signed up for war as a volunteer at a minute's notice, mm-hmm. right? And then later, when she's like, "Oh, they're all variants." They, they weren't, because he, Loki thought that they were all made by the timekeepers TVA. and they're working, yeah. you know, that's their whole life. Right. But it turns out that's what, that's what he was saying in the beginning episodes. Yeah. But that's they, why. They gave me this purpose, Bo, uh, yeah, Owen yeah, yeah, Wilson's yeah. character. Yeah. Um, but then when you find out that they're all variants, it's like at some point they forget mm-hmm. that they're variants. Or maybe he does remember. I don't know. but I don't think they know. I don't think they remember that they're variants. Because, like, in the beginning, I like the beginning of the episode when you're, like, like when she went into her life, uh, like, into her mind. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, that was, um, because she doesn't remember that that's, this has yeah, happened the past, in, her, yeah, yeah, in yeah. the past. Yeah. yeah. Very fascinating. I like where they're going with this, like, the whole time warp and, yeah. Time stuff's always fascinating to me. 
Yeah, yeah it's always fascinating. As long it's as just how right. to. Yeah, as long as they get it right. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's very hard to. You don't want to like poke holes in it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like this will feed into Eternal somehow. Yeah, I wonder how it goes with that, with the rest of the thing. We have to see. Let's let the let the show finish and. True. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For let's sure. See where it leads us. Selma Hayek's in Eternals. That's also why she was on the podcast. She was like hyping up Bliss and Eternals. Right. And when is that coming out? This should uh, be this year. Wait. Yeah, it's this year. Wait, isn't that weird? Owen Wilson and Selma Hayek were both in Bliss. Mm-hmm. Owen Wilson is in Loki. Yeah. Selma Hayek is in Eternals. Yeah. They really keep, like, the network close. Like, if you work for Disney or Marvel, it's like, we keep you in the circle. Probably because you had to be vetted. Like, I wonder how that works. Because why are they all yeah. being, like, played together? I don't know. Um how that happens sometimes um or like owen wilson or Selma hacks like oh this person's great you should hire them yeah i don't i don't know the 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 background like when they when do they make bliss first of all and then like true um or maybe they were already signed because like yeah signed. yeah exactly and i think the signing for eternals was announced a while back too oh uh, okay 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 so i uh, again i don't i don't know how that all works but <laughs> yeah but it's just <laughs> fascinating to think about that they're all like working just like um uh, in, in the Marvel world, yeah. In the Marvel world, yeah. Or the Disney world, because in Star Wars, mm-hmm. the girl, mm-hmm. remember, she was the person in Falcon oh, yeah. and Win- right. Winter Soldier. Right. We saw her in Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it comes down to you like that person. You're trying to make a character that fits for her again. Yeah. You want to work with her true. again, so. Yeah. But what sucks is, like, when they were talking about, like, Salma Hayek was talking about it, the money doesn't stay. So it's like, you always save for a rainy day, and then Dak Shepard was like, it's always raining in Hollywood because you'll get one job, but you don't know how long it'll last before yeah. you get another job. Yeah. You have to like line them all up. Yeah. Cause there's so many actors that don't work anymore. Like we forget about them. Mm-hmm. Like, um, who's that guy? Scott it seems Oakham. to happen more for actresses than actors. It, okay. True. Yeah. It happens like that generally. But well, I think, I think about Scott Pilgrim, mm-hmm. Remember the guy, uh, he was in super bad. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he was like doing a bunch of movies. He stopped. It's like, what happened to you? Yeah, again, like once they stop, once you're not popular anymore, or they don't have the right roles for you anymore. Yeah. Like it goes through can, phases. It goes through yourself. Ryan yes. Gosling. Yes, you can. He played like the nerd for so long in his youth, and then he got jacked, and then now he's playing all these like awesome roles. Right. So you got to do something like that. I don't know. But you know what's crazy? All right, so you were showing me Firefly and you saw, you showed me like Zac Efron was an extra or whatever. And yeah, yeah, yeah. he's like played a small role in yeah. Firefly. So I was listening to the Justin Timberlake podcast also yesterday. <laughs> and he was saying that in the Mickey Mouse Club, all those people became super famous. Like mm-hmm. Justin, like it was only for two years at ran, but um, Britney Spears was there. Um, Ryan Gosling was there. Carrie... Witherspoon was there, but she kind of fell off. Like she didn't really do anything anymore, but you know what I'm saying? Like, Mm -hmm. it's weird. You, you trace their careers and you're like, Oh, you did all these small parts to get to your, like we all focus on the, the win, but you don't see the progress. Yeah. 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 You know? And then when you see them, like, well, well, there were nobody technically in in the progress, right? uh, There's this line is like, I was a 10 year overnight success. Right. You've been working, working, working. And all of a sudden everyone knows your name. You're like, what? Yeah. Yeah. Which would be actually really fascinating if we just keep putting in the word. And then one day it's like, oh, if you're describing your podcast, we're like, what? You know, it's <laughs> like, it's like, it's like, oh yeah, they, they just started. It was like, no, we had two ep- 200 episodes in. Right. You know right. what I mean? It's like, it's like that. Yeah. You, you just never know. You just never know how it's going to work or like it's maybe it's not the right time for you. Or just, like you just yeah. don't, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, yeah. It's weird seeing Zac Efron in Firefly because, like, this was before he's in High School Musical. Mm-hmm. He was really young. So yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. oh, you've been grinding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it was a surprise to see that. <laughs> yeah. Even Justin Timberlake, he was grinding. He was saying how, like, he would do these, like, local talent scouts and then he'd fly out to this place and, like, mm. like do a small part. And oh, then yeah. he'd fly back to his ho- house and be like, oh, well, we'll see if another thing comes up. And then another king came up. And he just kept taking the opportunities until, like, now he's a megastar. Right. Who doesn't know Justin Timberlake? <laughs> you know, right? Like, True. All right. So, last thing, because I thought this is pretty interesting. Uh, wait, did you look into that thing at all? The the, the petty crime is now gone. Oh uh, yeah, I did. Okay, cool, um, cool, cool. not that it's gone. It's a misdemeanor. Oh, 
okay. means fines. Oh. How much is the fine? I don't know what the fine is. Okay. But you can't go to jail for it. But it has to be less than nine hundred and fifty dollars. Cool. So we're just stealing stuff now. Yeah. Get like a little fine. Is it where? Philadelphia? No. No, no, no. I think San Francisco. San Francisco. All right. Yeah, cool. Weird, weird time. But just make sure it's less than nine hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, yeah. Then I just got to miss. Do you watch that video? No, no. He only saw. She just sent a screenshot. Yeah, I seen the video like a month ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, the person just like in a bag, it put yeah, it in something. Yeah. I was like, oh my god, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, weird, weird times, weird world. Okay, so the Amazon rainforest. Um, remember we went to Graham Hancock's thing. Um, his, oh, like, yeah, yeah. his like talk. Okay. Uh, it was called America Before, mm-hmm. and he was saying that. Like people have written books and like stuff about this, the lost city of Z. You mm-hmm. know that it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. The temples in the rainforest, mm-hmm. uh, El Dorado. Yeah, there's so many lore about this, right? Uh, about like lost cities within the Amazon rainforest, mm-hmm. right? And then now with science, they're discovering uh, not really science. They're clear cutting the rainforest, and in clear cutting, they're finding these cities. Okay, but they're clear cutting for like economic purposes sure. they weren't supposed to be doing that <laughs> anyways so that's happening the most recent finding is that the reason why there's so many uh fruits and vegetables in the rainforest is because it was man-made they were bringing them in into those cities to feed themselves uh-huh. that's where the vegetation diversity comes from it's not actually like we all think of the amazon rainforest as this untouched, naturally naturally untouched place look it's the freaking garden of eden stuff keeps like growing there and like you could eat anything there's mm-hmm. so many like um unfigured out species of plants right, and, right, right? right. but they were actually cultivating that the oh, people that lived no. in the jungle that they're finding sense, that now. actually that actually makes sense yeah yeah. yeah, they found that the trees that are... To have such diversity of stuff there. Yeah. Makes sense. Because they were living there. Yeah. They needed resources. Mm-hmm. And instead of, like, farming, they were just growing the fruits and vegetables. Mm-hmm. Crazy, right? Well, it's a form of farming. It is, yeah, but it's not, like, clear-cut farming. It's not like they, like, no, 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 cut no, no, it no. down and, like... Um, than plants and seeds. It's like they just introduced these species into that right. area. Right, they had a different way of farming, I guess, but that was... Like, I guess a different term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. like, um, like an old school GMO mm-hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah, so isn't that fascinating? And then Graham Hancock talked about that. We're starting to find that out. Uh, when we were in Machu Picchu in Peru, what they said was, so Machu Picchu, it's like a, a school at the top of this mountain where you can't see it from the bottom, but if you're looking at the top, you can see. Right. It's basically what they would do is they send all their... Uh, leaders there to train so it was like a school for like the elite of the elite mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they learned like combat diplomacy elite mathematics right. astrology all that stuff and then what they said was when the spaniards started to come but i took this as like i i didn't i just like put it in my memory bank but i was like okay whatever we're gonna do this information but then it's like now it's coming back so they said that when the spaniards came all those people, they left and then lived in the rainforest. So I was like, okay, cool. They live in the rainforest. I thought like you're hiding out, whatever, whatever. But it's like, no, now that you put this in there, it's like there were cities in the rainforest. Mm-hmm. But it's hard to get in there because like the vegetation. So you had to know your way, how to get to those cities. Right, right. Right. You know, the lost city of Z, the story is that the guy, he his boat got like um, taken over. Mm-hmm. Like, he couldn't control his boat, and then it went through the entire Amazon rainforest. Okay. And then when he came out on the other end, he, like, wrote about these cities that he saw while he was in there. Mm-hmm. And they were like, ah, oh, you probably had, like, dehydration, and you were confused. Right, right, right. You didn't right, know right. what you were talking right. about. But now we're re-looking at those things like, wait, was he correct? Mm-hmm. Aren't they doing, like, they were doing, like, scans? They were doing that, too, yeah, yeah. Yeah, scans on, on the ground yeah, and was, seeing. Yeah, that was because, like, LIDAR... Things. Yeah, yeah. They, that's because uh, they started to find these cities when they clear cut it. So, like, instead of clear cutting, let's just scan. Right. Because it's like less detrimental. Yeah. To... Right. But oh. that's, it, it just makes complete sense. And then when you think about, because Graham Hancock was saying that uh, Atlantis was just a seafaring civilization. Mm-hmm. But we believe that people didn't invent boats till like way later. But how did you get to Hawaii? Exactly. I mean, it, the Hawaiians yeah. believed that they had big boats. Big, see, but in our Western thinking, see, you went to Hawaii and mm-hmm. you heard this. Mm-hmm. When I went to Egypt, they were like, 
look in that pier- like there's a museum attached to a pyramid and uh we went in and it was like a really old school boat that they used at that time they're like we had seafaring people back in the day mm-hmm. but in western society we we believe that that wasn't possible right like it like complete indoctrination of like yeah i mean uh i mean these are based on european understanding of history exactly right? which it, it, it's like it's almost like residential schools like remember they were they had yeah. their deprogramming mm-hmm, where mm-hmm. they're like no this is really what happened in history it's almost like we're waking up to realize that now yeah i think i think that's as the cultures be more become more global yeah, global and globalization yeah, yeah global and open to like what like information from around the world right not yeah. just only thinking north america or like the UK as totally, yeah. the leaders of science when, well, they've shown like, I mean, there was a lot of BBC shows that I've seen where they were like yeah. showing, like they had all these mats already in India oh, or like, cause they were studying stars like way before or Pythagoras was there before Pythagoras. Oh, <laughs> there, really? yeah. See, but, but we don't, we don't get taught that. Like, no, I know we're not getting taught that. That's what I mean. So it's like, so it's like, what are you teaching me then? Mm-hmm. You, you make me you make well we're still believe. learning the right th- things in that sense but we're not no, being history, history. taught Just the history. history yeah so remember what grant hancock said uh during his po- uh, during his presentation if you can control the history you can control the future because mm-hmm. you're like no we know where we've been this yeah. is exactly where it is and this is where we're going mm-hmm. but if you start to introduce we don't really know where we've been then people are like okay how do you know the truth right you you introduce doubt in people's minds yeah so there's a level of Understanding with that kind of thinking, but when, right? you tra- but when you travel, you see these things like you saw that there were giant boats in, mm-hmm. or you didn't see it, but they said like there were giant boats. Like made there's no other way to get to Hawaii without without giant boats. How are you going to people with a make, canoe? You're going to make it. Believe. That's not going to happen. They didn't, they didn't believe that people could actually build amazing ships back then. Mm-hmm. And then you go to Egypt, and you're like, they were like, you know, it's a desert. Yeah. So what they said is it was all. It used to be actually all water. Yeah. And like there was actually vegetation mm-hmm. around the um, the pyramids. Mm-hmm. That's why you need the boats because the boats were mo- like it was water around there. But mm-hmm. we see now we're like desert must have always been desert. It's like no, we don't think about like climate changes over time. Yeah, you know, right. climate change isn't new. Yeah, no. I, um, I w- what was the other one? I was watching something on DW News or the breaking down. Like, what is the biggest invention? Okay. Yeah. But we never think of it as like the greatest invention. What is it? Which is the toilet. Fair. Yeah, <laughs> right? That's like, true. Yeah, because like how that we would have like uh, had like disease. Exactly. Rats would have yeah, had, exactly. You know, and then irrigation so would, important. It's like a flush. Everything's like nothing happened. You know what I mean? True. <laughs> so true. Is, that's fascinating. Then, yeah. Actually. And then they kind of went back in time like how it was. And they were talking about the, like an Indus civilization. Okay. They had. Toilets? Uh, a system like that with where water was coming into people's houses what yeah this is way back and we still don't know how to device the um decipher their tablets see so it's like (laughs) history goes far back older than people think yeah you know and even with like the burning of the libraries alexandria it's like Mm -hmm. how much did we lose information that we lost there yeah and then all right all right so even a great example of straightforward misconception of western society you know people are like oh the burning of the library of alexandria so they think it's one event it happened four times mm-hmm. but, yeah which right. is like kind of interesting because you're like why didn't you just move the library <laughs> i mean it happened four times but it wasn't so like the one we all think about is like the persians came and they burned everything that was like the last time that, or one of the last times and i don't even think that they really did that when we were there, they because we we visited the current Library mm. of Alexandria. Right. It was really funny. Is they're like, I was like, is this the real Library of Alexandria? They're like, yeah, we believe that this is the spot where it was. So we built the a new. Right. It's so high, dude. It's crazy high tech. Mm-hmm. And what was funny is, she said, you would think that we'd move the spot. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, totally. That's this funny. This would be the fifth time. So what they did instead is they kept the location similar to what they believe it was. But now they made it fireproof, waterproof, floodproof, right, right, like yeah, all those yeah. things because of modern technology. Right. It's, it's great, dude. Like, maybe I, it's I, crazy. I, I mean, maybe at the time when it was created, um, it, wait, 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 wait. I, it's it's not it's not even like it's not like they have 
like papyrus that's like within class. Like mm-hmm. it's the craziest library. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I'm saying like why they didn't move it. I think. Well, I'm not talking about today's time. Today's time is more, more like memor um in in memorandum. To yeah, that, right. Like it's like a um, freaking uh, <laughs> sentimental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, I think back then it probably was like this is just the hub. Like oh, why? Why would you move it true, from a hub true, where true, everything's true. coming through, right? Right, right. It, it's sort of like Hong Kong. How Hong Kong? Yeah. everyone had to go there before they go in China. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't. I think that's probably why. Even though they go through different fires, but like you don't move it just because it's a fire, right? Right, right. Because right, right. it's a hub. But you have other things that are accompanying, like ports or something like that. Right. So it might have been like a huge place, hub of a place. Okay. You, you just sparked my, I just, I thought about this a couple of days ago. I didn't really write this down to talk about because it was like more of a personal thought, but okay. If you're listening to this and you're like, how do you guys know so much? <laughs> or like, well, it is interest, right? Yeah. I didn't even learn. I didn't even, I wasn't even put on the path to learning this stuff Mm -hmm. until like university. Mm -hmm. That's when it really like, I don't know about you. Like, no, we were always deconstructing what the other person was saying. Like we, like the whole breaking down, like prove it to me. We've always been doing that. (laughs) But I'm talking about like actually going out to learn these things. Mm -hmm. It didn't start for me until university. And it wasn't even, it wasn't even a university related thing. I mean, like I was looking for it, but I won't, I won't like, get into the whole personal aspect of it maybe i'll tell you offline but there was this person that introduced me to the alchemist and all of these things <laughs> right but remember how i said like who you are when you become 30 so from that moment i just kept searching more and more esoteric things and like <laughs> yeah. let me in. but then if you look at that person now it's like why did you stop you know right. what i mean right. like the person that got me started mm-hmm. stopped mm-hmm. and i'm like why? <laughs> what? Like, well, I don't know. Understand? Like, why do you stop? There's a point when life beats you down so much. I guess, yeah. Like mm-hmm. the alchemists, like believe in your dreams, like um, go after them. All, all this, like, it. It's like, why? <laughs> like, why did you stop looking into things like that? Did life beat you down so hard that you? Don't even want to... Or maybe, like, was it something that he was super into? Yeah. Or that person was super into well, it? They, they were going through a suffering period. They got into all this esoteric stuff. They, quote, unquote, healed themselves. And then now they just, like, don't even look into that stuff. Or they do, but a very, like... I don't know. Maybe maybe it wasn't as important to them. You know what I mean? Like, he, it, he, like sometimes we read into it without realizing, right? Some, someone could just say something as a joke... But then oh. I would have taken that as a much more serious thing. No, no, but this wasn't a joke. This was no, like, no, 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 oh, no. I know, I know. But I'm saying like there's a certain... Oh, it, it, was, it was serious up to a point for them. Yeah. Ah, uh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. It's, it's sort of like I want to learn all about this like manifestation right. and like building the life yeah. you want. Yeah. But I don't actually want to do it. I just want to learn about it. Right. And, it, and then it, you, you brought like the earlier time we said like you can say these things, but you in the back of your mind, you don't really believe it. Oh, true. Like the synapses in your yeah. brain, right? Maybe that person was trying to like deprogram themselves mm-hmm. out of those synapses like mm-hmm. they were saying it because they believe they mm-hmm. is true but like their subconscious programming was like pulling them back yeah so like i i people are like oh you love joe rogan like n- i didn't even know about joe rogan until this person <laughs> introduced me they introduced me to the alchemist joe rogan <laughs> jim carrey like you you introduced me all to like the history stuff but like all this mindset like i came stuff. across joe rogan a long time ago but, but you weren't you weren't a but i wasn't like you weren't like oh dude you should check this dude out no no no. i, I don't but i don't generally do that like you should check joe rogan out and then i started <laughs> to do it and i outpaced them like i watched all the episodes and then i like re- refer back and they're like mm-hmm. oh i haven't even seen all that i'm like but you 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 were the one who got me onto it mm-hmm. you know but i guess you're right it's like it was perceived value from my end i was like oh you really put a lot of emphasis on this but like looking back it's like you really you did up to a point yeah there's a certain point. You to wanted the... to learn about how the world works, but you didn't want to affect change in the world. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like, because because it's like me and you talking about this. Like, I couldn't hold this conversation with that person anymore. <laughs> they would just be looking at us like, "Wow, you know so much." It's like, dude, you got me onto this. Like, <laughs> why did you stop? You could have had this conversation with us. Sure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like. Right. Yeah. 
she's, she's kind of sad, but anyways. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> I will end it as it is what it is. <laughs> Are you got anything happy? Like, let's end it with something happy. Happy? Um, excited for Black Widow in a couple of weeks? I don't know. Oh, our niece is screaming <laughs> there at the martial arts. Okay. And, uh, yeah, right. We're starting stage two. Cool, Step cool. two. There we go. Let's very soon. Look at the positivity area. <laughs> there you go. All right, cool. I feel a lot better. All right. Till next time. Take it easy, bitch. <laughs> Peace. Bye. Bye. All right. Hope you enjoyed that episode. Uh, be sure to like, share, subscribe, all those fun things. And check out our sponsors, Zenro Clothing Co., Portion Bakery, and Podbean. Take it easy, bitch. Peace.